Hello. It is such an honor to have been asked to make this presentation today. This will be the first time that I have not connected in person with so many of you since about 2006. I believe that was my first year with this group. And it will leave such a hole in my heart that world events have made it impossible. But to be able to do this short talk allows for a continuation of that connection. It has been a year like no other that we all know. Ironically, there were joyous events in our family. Our son Alex and his wife Liz welcomed their son Sam in July. Our daughter Julie and her husband Ben welcomed their daughter Sophie in October. Yes, pictures are available. This would be a joy under any set of circumstances, but coming at a time of such sadness in the world, it made us realize how fortunate all of us are. Of course, we have weathered the most destructive political forces in American history, and I hope I pray that part of the national nightmare will truly be over in five weeks. I am, as those of you who know me, a perpetually positive and optimistic guy in spite of whatever is in front of me. So I'm hoping that the transition to President Biden is in the end a smooth one or as smooth as it can be. And we can hit reset on the game clocks on January the 21st and return to being a nation that can serve around the world as a model for pluralistic democracy. I hope. This will be the first time in at least a decade that I'm not doing one of my short seven minute takes on a topic on which I am working that connects to humiliation and dignity. But that does not mean I am not thinking about those issues. I've spoken often to this group about therapeutic jurisprudence, about the relationship between law, shame, and humiliation, about how people with autism are treated in the legal system, about how juveniles are treated in the legal system, about trauma humiliation and the legal system, about the ways that seclusion and restraint policies in psychiatric hospitals humiliate and shame those at risk, about how the legalization of marijuana would help alleviate some of the law's humiliating focus, and how persons with mental disabilities are treated in police encounters. Had this been a normal year, the word normal, of course, is in quotes, I would most likely have talked about one of my current research focuses, how persons with traumatic brain injury are treated in the legal system and how we can bring the dignity to that cohort of individuals. And the takeaway of my message here would have been this, that our failure to understand how this population is regularly shamed and humiliated in the legal system robs them of the dignity to which they're entitled under law and good practices. Some of you might be thinking, why is he talking about this at the time of COVID? Not an unreasonable question, but I do have an answer. We will emerge from this horror of horrors. It has a special resonance to me. My paternal grandfather died in 1919 of the pandemic that was then called the Spanish flu. But when this happens, when we emerge, we will do a reset on how we live our lives, our goals, our values, our perspectives. My message to the world is that when this happens, we need to think carefully, more carefully than ever, about those who are marginalized and those who have been cast aside by society. I end with, and this is going to surprise no one there who knows me, the first verse of Bob Dylan's epic song, Chimes of Freedom, that was played, not coincidentally by Bob, at President Clinton's inauguration several lifetimes ago. Uh, luckily for everyone here, I'm going to recite these words. I'm not going to sing them. Far between sundown's finish and midnight's broken toll, we ducked inside the doorway, thunder crashing. As majestic bells of bolt struck shadows in the sound, seeming to be the chimes of freedom flashing. Flashing for the warrior whose strength is not to fight, flashing for the refugees on the unarmed road of flight, and for each and every underdog soldier in the night, and we gazed upon the chimes of freedom flashing. This is my message to the world. May the chimes of freedom flash again. Thank you, Evelyn, and thank you, Linda, for all you do and for this opportunity. Thank you.